Hello and this is Anton, and it's time to talk about FRBs or Fast Radio Bursts once again. Mostly because in just the last two months there's been some more updates and some more somewhat intriguing discoveries, potentially once and for all pinpointing one major source of many of the FRBs, solving the mystery of some of them. And so let's talk about these discoveries in more detail, and I guess let's start with one of the more recent studies that just came out. The study by Ines Pastor, Marizuela and Jory van Leeuwen and the team from Netherlands. And here by using the Westerbork Synthesis Radio Telescope, also known as WSRT, a very powerful telescope that contains 14 really large steerable antenna, researchers were able to discover over a dozen more FRBs, but more importantly, measured some of the properties in such a way that it actually allowed us to figure out what exactly potentially produced these bizarre radio emissions. But to understand this discovery, let's briefly go through the summary of previous discoveries and what we know so far. So most FRBs, most fast radio bursts discovered, all come from very distant galaxies. And though for every individual galaxy a typical fast radio burst would be kind of rare, because so many galaxies produce them, we actually see a lot of FRBs every single day. And prior to their discovery in 2007, which was actually done completely by accident, some of the most powerful radio emissions always came from pulsars, from neutron stars. And these can be visible up to 100,000 light years away, and sometimes even a little bit farther. But for the Milky Way galaxy, when it comes to fast radio bursts, so far there has only been one detection. This happened in 2020, and the video in the description talks about this more. But this location, SGR 1935-2154, has been officially confirmed to host a neutron star, and actually to be more specific, a magnetar, and has now produced one FRB. Not very powerful, but an FRB nevertheless. And this was the first evidence we had that most of the FRBs extremely likely come from neutron stars. But understanding their origin is a completely different story. As a matter of fact, in modern astronomy, it's one of the main stories and one of the main scientific mysteries. And so in this recent detection of confirmed 18 FRBs, they actually all seem to show very specific properties of polarization and burst that we often observe in very similar objects such as pulsars and nearby magnetars. With just one exception, they're way way brighter, or way more powerful. But they also all contain just a little bit of scattering, very likely produced by something around these objects, with that something potentially being a lot of gas. But every one of these FRBs was also slightly different from one another, which essentially suggests that whatever the source is, it seems to be embedded in different types of media and different types of, I guess, gas and different types of nebula, which makes them slightly different, produces slightly different frequencies and slightly different scattering, and would basically imply some kind of a nebular origin with something very powerful like a neutron star in the center. Which is exactly what we usually see in pulsar and magnetar systems as well, but once again with a lot less power. But intriguingly, around the same time, there was actually another really important study they discovered something very similar, but in a completely different way. Here they used something known as scintillation. And so in this study by Kenzie Nemo and his team, researchers took a slightly different approach. And it's the approach that we're all actually taught as kids when looking at the night skies in order to figure out if what we're looking at is a star or a planet. Now you might have already forgotten this, but back in the days I think most of us are told that if something is twinkling, twinkle twinkle little star, it is a star. Whereas if something is more or less stable and doesn't change much, it has to be a planet. So basically, a classic way of telling a star from a planet apart is that stars twinkle, planets don't. And that's because the light from both passes through our atmosphere. But because planets are actually a little bit bigger in size and technically appear as tiny disks, they don't flicker and their light appears more or less stable. This is based on the principle of light dispersion as it passes through the atmosphere. But for many different stars, especially really far away ones, because they appear as tiny dots, and the source in this case is a tiny dot, it starts to flicker, suggesting that the apparent size of the light source is actually the key factor when it comes to scintillation. And here an extremely similar principle can then be applied to very distant objects with light coming from very far away. And so for this other study, researchers looked at the scintillation of these FRBs as the radio waves traveling away from them move through various gas inside galaxies and through various interstellar medium. And in this case, if the object it's coming from is really really small and very distant, we actually expect more scintillation or more twinkling. 
except that in this case it appears as radio twinkling or radio scintillation. And based on the analysis of a repeated FRB known as 2022-1022A, the FRB detected in 2022, researchers were able to constrain the overall size of this object or the source of the FRB, providing very important evidence that the emissions in this case have to come from some kind of a magnetosphere or an extremely compact region of a very compact object. Or just to rephrase this, the only way this scintillation or this twinkling could be produced is only if it came from a very compact point within about 10,000 kilometers of a highly magnetized source. So that's basically smaller than planet Earth. And so this FRB has to have come from a super magnetized region, with the only object that's able to produce anything like this being magnetar. So in this case, this study definitively confirms that at least one of these FRBs also came from a magnetar, just like in the Milky Way. And though some of the previous studies suggested that maybe this is actually created by something much farther away from the object, and is possibly the result of some kind of a shock wave or a massive cloud really far from the star, here this observation confirms that it has to come from the magnetic environment of an extremely compact object, and also very close to the source, which means that a lot of these FRBs are potentially generated right above the surface of the magnetar through some somewhat mysterious means. The actual process of production is still not understood, but there's at least one previous video that goes through some hypothetical scenarios. One of them involves swallowing a planet. But intriguingly, once again, around the same time, there was actually another study that potentially created a bit of a problem for a lot of these explanations. And here this was a study that focused on trying to figure out where exactly a lot of these FRBs came from. So for example, by looking at something inside the galactic arm, like in some of the previous detections you see right here, it might be the result of a magnetar once again, because magnetars, in a nutshell, are just extremely young neutron stars. Neutron stars that are usually a few hundred or a few thousand years old, that will eventually quiet down and become something else. We do expect these objects in very active star-forming regions and in various galactic arms. But it looks like, according to the new study, not all of our bees come from regions where young stars could exist. And so in a study we briefly discussed previously, one of the FRBs was discovered in a very bizarre place. This was a study you see right here, and we've briefly talked about it last time, but here this was, first of all, a quiescent galaxy that was not producing new stars as fast, a galaxy about 2 billion light years away from planet Earth, also an extremely luminous and a very massive galaxy, actually the most massive galaxy to produce an FRB so far, but more importantly, as you can see from this image, it came from the halo of the galaxy, 130,000 light years away from the center. And in this region we don't expect a lot of young stars, and actually expect a lot of ancient stars, for example inside globular clusters. Now in the Milky Way galaxy, inside a globular cluster, most stars are usually billions of years old. And so in these locations, we don't really expect to find magnetars. But here we had an FRB, 2024-0209A, that already produced at least 21 additional pulses in 2024 alone, and is most likely going to be producing more this year. Which basically suggests that maybe not all FRBs come from these locations with young stars, and maybe not all FRBs are produced by magnetars. But that second proposition didn't really make a lot of sense, because here the emissions still resembled everything else, very magnetized, coming from a compact region, and so it did actually suggest a magnetar after all. And the question was, so okay, what can be possibly happening here? Over 100 FRBs so far have been proposed to have formed as a result of a magnetar. They all seem to have very similar emissions. But that requires a core collapse supernova. Essentially a massive young star going supernova, leaving behind a neutron star which then becomes a magnetar. But in the past there has been a proposition that magnetars might also form in different ways, and more importantly, in ways involving collisions. And so if this is some kind of a global cluster containing ancient stars, it might also contain a lot of white dwarfs, just like in clusters around the Milky Way. And if there's a merger between two white dwarfs, or a white dwarf and a neutron star, according to at least one study we've discussed previously, there is actually a chance it might turn into a magnetar as well. That video in the description talks about this a little bit more, but chances are that a lot of magnetars are formed in a very similar way, and colliding white dwarfs, in some sense, could also be some of the biggest sources for these bizarre radio emissions. And intriguingly, something very, very similar was also found around this galaxy, Massey 81, just two years ago. A very similar fast radio burst coming from a region that's outside of the galaxy, with extremely similar emissions, suggesting a magnetar. 
So basically these new discoveries potentially suggest that some magnetars form in ways we never imagined, or I guess more accurately, point at the fact that we have no idea how magnetars really form. We just know that they exist, we know they're very powerful and contain ridiculous magnetic fields, and we know that they seem to be responsible for fast radio bursts, at least most of them. But because this is still an active mystery, and a mystery that does not have a final conclusion yet, more observations are required in order to find more evidence and in order to have even more explanations. And so at least for now, as of January, February of 2025, FRBs are still a mystery. We're going to come back and talk more about them in some of the future videos, but the way things are going, chances are we will be solving this mystery in the next couple of years. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.